First broadcast over on Radio 4 in 1993, Robert Glenister stars alongside Patricia Hayes as an uninvited guest brings complications. How I Met Franz, a modern fairy story by John Antrobus with Patricia Hayes and Robert Glenister. Everybody has a story, have you noticed? <laughs> a version of their life? The authentic one, of course. It's like their Bible. It explains everything. As I will explain how I met Franz. We all live in a yellow submarine, a yellow submarine, a yellow submarine. We all live in a yellow submarine, a yellow submarine, a yellow submarine. And the Franz are all aboard. Many more of them live next door. And the band begins to play. Now, I must impress upon you that this is a true story. It's nothing fanciful. True life. You've heard of that, haven't you? Reality. We've heard of reality. It's out there somewhere. I first came to this estate knowing no one, and that's how I like it. But things were to change. I had an early encounter with George, the estate caretaker. Settling in all right, are you? Yes, thank you. My handle's George. Hello, George. My handle's Jack. Hello, Jack. If you ever want anything, let me know. Thank you, George. Old cupboards, bits of carpet, lino, medicine cabinets, chairs sometimes, curtain rod, rails, junk... Tat, rubbish. We're always throwing stuff out. Thank you. Can't give it away sometimes. Where are you from? Uh, bed and breakfast hotel. Oh, well, you'll be greatly relieved to be here then. Good. Won't you? Well, I don't know. I don't know how I feel. Well, it's a cheap rent. That probably means I make a lot less money. You can get by here. That's what I'm afraid of. You don't have to worry here. But you can if you want to. <laughs> no one will trouble you. It's a quiet estate. Don't worry. Don't go and buy anything without talking to me first. Because I might have just what you want. Thank you, George. Oh, I love to go upon the ring along the mountain track. And as I go, I love to sing my knapsack on my back. That's friends. My companion. My lodger. My buddy. When I was first here on my own, I wanted to meet someone. Now I'm not so sure. You know, I thought then, it's not natural for a human being to be on his own so much. I felt odd, even perverted. It's something you can't really explain. So I won't. Oh, they ask you to join things like the Tenants Association. But you know it'll be more people like you there, and you can't bear that. I'm being unfair. <laughs> but I've a right to be. It's my story. My version, remember? One day... I realised someone was standing on my doorstep. I could see them through the frosted glass. I wondered what that person was doing, standing there without knocking. Eventually, I decided to go and ask. It was quite a short person. I knew that before I opened the door. Excuse me, do you want somebody? Yes, dear, the lady. What lady? The lady that lives here. There's no lady living here. Isn't the dear? Are you sure? Yes. Well, who lives here, then? I do. You do? Yes. That's strange. Look, I'm sorry, but the person you want... Yes, dear. She lived here, I remember. What are you doing here, then? I've moved in. With her? Have you come home? Been at sea? Have you been in the Navy? Seen the world? Bought postcards from Egypt? No, I believe she died. The lady you're talking about. Oh, dear, and there's only you left now. That's sad, dear. Can I come in? Well... Just for a moment. I must sit down. Are those chairs there? Uh, yes, they are. Oh. Oh, put the kettle on, will you, dear? Yes, well, I suppose you might as well have a cup of tea. Yes, let's have a nice cup of tea, both of us. Yes, dear. It's nice here, it is. You've done this place up nicely, haven't you? I haven't touched it. They did it before I got here, the estate people. Did they? Did they talk to you much? No, 
I wasn't here. Nobody talks to you round here. They've been in to clear my drains, but they wouldn't talk to me. I think someone told them not to. I'll go for days without talking to anyone, dear. Just the Pakistanis in the corner shop. And you can't count them. No? Why not? They took me away, dear, on holiday to talk to people. Oh, a talking holiday. Who did? Yes, dear, the Salvation Army. A talking holiday. The idea was that you talk to people, not sit in a corner like some, so we went to Hastings. Oh, that's nice. Yes, dear. So the Salvation Army come round, and they says to me, get in the back of that minibus. I says, what with that lot? That miserable looking lot? And they says, yes. I says, hold on, hold on, what's that wheelchair for? They says, that wheelchair's for you. I says, I didn't order no blooming wheelchair, I says. <laughs> And they says, well, that's what's written down on this bit of blooming paper. I says, I want to see that bit of blooming paper. And there it was, official typewriting. Tea up. Oh, that's good, dear. Because I don't want to cause you no trouble. No, that's all right. It's nice to have a bit of company. So they pushed me round Hastings in that wheelchair, dear, all week. Me, what has the use of me legs? <laughs> Fancy that, because of an administrative error. Yes, dear. On the front, I had a blanket, because the wind blows right up your skirt, and there's some who wait for that in the shelters. Well, you can't be too careful. Yes, dear. Anyway, I got sent home for swearing. What? Yes, bad language, they said. I said I was swearing at the others. I don't remember. Oh, dear. I'm sure they deserved it. Yes, dear. Thank you, dear. Anyway, they sent me home early. I said, it's all right. I'll walk from here. What, from Hastings? No, from the ambulance. Where was it parked? By the curb. Have a biscuit. Yes, dear. Thank you, dear. Three spoonfuls of sugar, if you please. How, how long have you lived here? Oh, a long time. I was a girl here. That's when they had railings. They used to tie me up to them, the other kids. Oh, that's nice. Yes, dear. See, my mistake was nursing me mother all those years. Ah. I nursed me father, then I nursed me mother. Oh. And then they had to put me in hospital by the end of it all. Oh. Well, how long did it go on? Twelve years. I left me job to nurse me dad, and then when he died, she fell sick. Your mum? Yes, dear. Do you mind if I have that last chocolate biscuit? <laughs> no, go on, I can buy some more. Last of the big spenders, eh, dear? <laughs> I like a man that splashes his money around. Always have a way with women, they do. So, your mother was grieving for her husband, your father? She'd never clean up his messes. I know that. I had to do all that. That was for me wickedness. I know that now. You always learn something if you live long enough, dear. Maybe not. You chuck me out soon as you've had enough. I'll understand. I'll understand, dear. I'll go and buy some stamps. That'll kill half an hour. Then I'll sit on the bench in the cold, and then I'll go home. Well, I thought that was quite a harmless visit. But when I met George, the caretaker out and about, he had other ideas. Steer clear of her. Take my advice. She's a pest. What's her name? I have nothing to do with her. Don't let her pass your doorstep. You'll never get rid of her. We had tenants apply to move off this estate because of her. A harmless old woman? Hit the light dogs, didn't he? You can't always go by appearances. How are you settling in? All right, are you? I was looking for you. We just broke up a wardrobe. Couldn't keep it near the space. I don't want a wardrobe. Pity, then. I don't need one. What a shame. Bit of a nuisance, is she? Yeah, I'll say. It don't pay to be kind to some people. They'll take advantage. Give them an inch, they'll take a mile. They used to burn witches. Now, that was a good idea. What about the railings? She said there were railings in this estate once. They took them down during the war. She must have been a kid, then. She must have hoped for something, not I mean... Oh. I could have saved you that ironing board. I've got an ironing board. Because they crop up frequently, ironing boards. Well, I suppose that's not to be wondered at, George. Oh, you'll be surprised, Jack. Stuff you find round here on this estate. None of it worth a light. They come here with tat, they live with tat, and when they die, that's what we clear out. Tat, tat, tat. But I'll be thinking of you always from now on. We all live in a yellow submarine. A yellow submarine. A yellow submarine. It's not easy living with a compulsively cheerful person like Franz. Yet I must acknowledge that there's something in me that has brought him into my life. Some part of my subconscious that has objectified as Franz. I had to meet him. You have to meet some people, don't you? There are some on your pathway that you have to meet. And it's incredible how it happens sometimes. 
But that's my story. And it's true. Anyway, going back to when I first came here. She came again, the woman. She visited me. She stood on my doorstep and waited and waited. At last, I went to the door and opened it and asked her, Why don't you knock? Oh, I am glad you're in, dear. Why don't you knock? Why did you just stand on my doorstep? I wasn't making a nuisance of myself, I hope. I hope I wasn't. I wouldn't like to intrude, dear. Is your mother in? No, my mother died earlier this year. I used to love talking to her, dear. It wasn't my mother who lived here. It was another lady, and she died as well. Did she die in a field, dear? A big green field? No, I don't think so. Because I've seen it, dear. It's very nice. That's good news. Yes, dear. Thank you, dear. I didn't stay there myself. I came home. Good. Can I come in, dear? No. I'm doing my laundry or something else at the moment. I won't be a moment. What do you want? I uh, want to talk to someone. I haven't talked to someone for three days. Well, don't the social services help you? I mean, surely. Haven't they got a club? I don't like going there, dear. They're all against me. They're all old. I like a bit of company more my own age. Well, exactly. I mean, more the way I feel, dear. I feel young, I do. You see, I've got friends of my own age, or I would have, I expect, if I went out more. Can I come in, dear? I won't be a moment. Uh, I would like to take the weight off my feet. Could I sit in that chair like I did before? Just for a minute. Go on, there's a sport. Be a sport. Oh, all right. Oh. But this is the last time. And it's nothing personal, but... Oh, that's better, dear. I I'll keep my shoes on, don't worry. Uh, thank you. I don't like familiarity. Not till you get to know someone, dear. Then you can let your hair down. How old are you? Well... Young, I'd say. <sighs> like me, dear. Young at heart, and that's where it counts. We can do what we like. It's nobody's business. It's how we feel that's important. Look, I'm very busy. I've got some letters to write. I hope you're writing to the council about the dog message. I'll put it on my list. Don't worry. Dear sir, I'll keep treading in lots All of... All right, I know what to put. Good, dear. I'll just sit here a moment. Oh... Three sugars, please, if you're making it. How did you guess? I have got the kettle on. Yes, dear. Thank you, dear. He come round once a vicar, the local vicar did, dear. He had nothing at all to say for himself, and he never said nothing about Jesus either. He just went on and on about jumblery, jumble sales. I didn't let him in next time he come round. Good. Yes, dear. I oh, like a talk. You can't talk to a Pakistani, can you? Not when you're buying a pint of milk. Mind you, they're very polite. And I buy me stamps there as well. Well, that shows you've got no prejudice. Yes, dear. There she blows. I'll make some tea then. Don't go to any trouble on my account, dear. I'm not worth it. Of course you are. No, I'm rubbish. I've been told that often enough. We're all God's children. Are we, dear? It's not what the vicar said. He said we'd all got a responsibility for the church roof. That's all he said. Yes, I see. Only I must ask you, Mrs... It's not personal, but I must ask you not to call again. I understand, dear. Don't worry. It's my wickedness, you know. They told me that. What? Yes, yes, dear. The doctors, all of them. One of them said to me, he said, you're wicked. And that's why bad things happen to you. And he got into bed with me. You have to accept their word, don't you? Well, I don't know about that. The doctor telling you you're ill is one thing, but telling you you're wicked and getting into bed with you. Yes, that's right, dear. They put me in a private ward to have their way with me. What, all of them? Oh, yes. Constantly. Constant visitations I had. Specialists, the lot. I was their favourite. Yes, all right. Well, here's tea. Let's have tea. I hope I'm not telling you things I shouldn't, dear. Stop me if I am. You put your foot down. I'm used to strong handling. My trouble is I haven't had a man round for years. Biscuit? Oh, thank you, dear. I run wild if I don't get corrected, and I'm the first to say it. I mean, the doctors were good at first. They let me in for operations. I could always get in the hospital for company. I always got an operation if I made up my mind to. Oh, yes, they were good like that. Those were good days. I was in and out the hospital. Ambulance, you name it. Always an ambulance outside my door in those days, dear. I was important. I was somebody. Aftercare. Outpatient, oh yes. Then one day, they says there's nothing more we can do for you. Don't come back, they says. Finito. We've taken out everything we can think of, they says. All me organs. Oh, well, they've probably gone somewhere useful. Well, some have gone to Africa, I do know that. I got a letter once. What, from one of your organs? Do you like making conversations, dear, do you? Well, no, not much really these days. Prostitutes, dear. Pardon? Prostitutes. That's all the doctors will examine these days. Prostitutes and scarlet women, and most of them off this estate. Undressing. That's all they want to do. 
Get undressed. Yes, well, I'm sorry, you've got to go now. Have I, dear? I'll be getting along now, then I can see you've had enough of me. I'm ever so grateful, dear, for our talk. You tell your mother when she gets home I'm sorry I missed her. I would go to Pakistan with that Pakistani, but they wouldn't understand me over there, would they? I wouldn't let that stop you. Going all that way and you can't have a decent conversation, and I don't know if they've got any benches out there. I'm not sitting on the ground, not for anyone. She hasn't been bothering you again, has she, Jack? Not really. Well, she did call round, pass that by. That woman, that flipping woman. You didn't let her in, did you? No. I don't know why I lied. I suddenly felt ashamed, compromised. But it's not as if anything had happened. Happened? Oh, come on, what could happen? She's the menace of the estate. She's worse than the kids. Oi! Get off that roof! I'll tell your mum! She's not a vandal, is she? I mean... The trouble she causes. Don't underestimate her. She was in the hospital for six months, and they kept the flat for her, the trustees. Damn fools. Yeah, well, she had to have someone to come out to, didn't she? They could have thrown her out. They could have demanded the keys. She wasn't paying the rent. The governor's waived it. They should have kept her in that loony bin where she belongs. She's got a two-bedroom flat up there. Nobody can move her out now. That was a family home, eh? Where she nursed her mother and father. Well, it can't have been easy for her. When did they come here, the family? Eh? When did she move on to this estate? 1938, record show. I looked her up. She came here when she was a kid? Jack, while I think of it, call me a fool, but I saw this dirty old gas cooker and I thought of you immediately. I've already got a gas cooker, George. I could have it installed for nothing. Clean it up, save a few bucks. It's too late. Oh, crikey, I hate to think of you spending money, Jack. Well, think of something else, George. Life goes on. She must have known more about this estate than anyone else, wouldn't you say? You might say that. It's built over water. An old reservoir. I like to be near water. I like fishing. Do you like fishing, Jack? No. The cellars flood some winters. I built a boat. You built a boat inland? Yes, I knew it was over water. Took it down to the coast, launched it. It sank in about seven hours. Well, that must have been a learning experience. If ever you want to know about the history of this estate, don't ask her, ask me. Right. I know how it started, son, and I know how it'll finish. And all I've got to say to you, Jack, is seamanship. Right, seamanship. Forget the rest. OK. We're patching things up, moving things round from hovel to hovel. Tap, rubbish, junk. Make do and mend. It'll all be underwater soon, that's the laugh. Believe me, Jack, the best thing you can do is save all your money and buy a boat. I won't be happy until you have one. You'll know when it's time to go aboard. Well, you could have knocked me down with a feather. You never know who you're talking to, do you? Bloke with a full-scale Noah complex. I'll tell you why. Everyone's got to make their life interesting. That's why they turn to myth, extraterrestrials, patterns in harvest fields. There's something in us. But you won't believe me. You want a true story. That's why you're listening. And that's what you're getting. Hey, Jude, don't be afraid. Take a sad song and make it better. I suppose with friends, it's a matter of being grateful. When I remember where I've come from, the sheer isolation of that bed and breakfast place. But in a small flat like this, his endless selection of choral works can be quite trying. Beneath his shell of cheerfulness, which goes quite deep, I agree, I am convinced there is a core of desperate depression in him. One can only hope. She came again, and stood on my step and waited, and it seemed an eternity to me before I was provoked to answer her silence, her endless not knocking on my door. Well? Is your mother in, dear? My mother doesn't live here. I told you she died years ago. They're all dead. Yes, dear. I need to talk to you, dear. There's been rumours... Rumours? Yes. Yes, dear. Rumours? What rumours? Oh, you haven't heard them, then? Oh, I'm glad it hasn't come back to you. About you ripping my clothes off when I just come in for a cup of tea. Oh, look, please, I've had enough. Please go away, madam. I'm sure I can get somebody to remove you. I wish you would, dear. If you want to phone anybody, I'll wait here. It's no good phoning the police. They won't talk to me anymore. I've tried them. Look... I don't mean to be unkind. If I could come in, dear, just for a moment, be a sport, we could talk about an arrangement. Arrange, but be a sport? What are you talking about? Well, anything goes with me, dear. I can be accommodating. I know what men are like. I'd love a cup of tea, dear. You're so good at it. It would be the height of foolishness for me to ask you in. You should have thought of that the first time, dear. I didn't ask to be led on. 
Let on? Yes, dear. Trifling with my affections. Look, I have not been trifling with your affections, Mrs. I don't think you realise your power over women, do you, dear? OK, this conversation is over. I'm sorry, I must bid you good afternoon. But she stood there. It must have been another half hour. I couldn't stand it. Do you realise what you're doing? I just want to get the weight off my feet, dear. I want to come in and sit down for a moment. I don't want to be cruel to you. It's your nature, dear. I'm used to it. Don't send me home without a conversation. Please, dear, I beg of you. <sighs> this must be the very, very last time. Yes, dear. Thank you, dear. I'm going to give you all my furniture, I've decided. I don't want all your furniture. Well, I don't need it. No one comes to see me, and you have lots of visitors, don't you? Sitting down and lying on things. No. Nope. Women mainly, I suppose. You can suppose what you like. Oh, that's better. That is a relief. Is the kettle on, then? Yes, I was going to have a cup of tea, and I saw you standing outside, and I wouldn't have been able to enjoy it. I'll go and make a pot of tea. Our last one. Thank you, dear. A few biscuits wouldn't come amiss. I know, I know. And I won't bother you again, don't worry. I just want our arrangements to be clear. Good. I'm not expecting any money. What? Money? What? I'm not that kind of a girl. Don't worry. This is impossible. I agree with you, dear. Impossible, impossible, dear. I will not move in without a ring on me finger. I'm glad we got that straight. That's why we've got to put a stop to it right now, while there's still time. You're dead right there. Try and see reason. I know your blood's hot, but I'm old enough to be your mother and it's not natural. What's not natural? We haven't done anything. Because I've held back. You've held back? What are you talking about? Ring on your finger, money? What do you think this is, a breach of promise case? I suppose if your father was still alive, he'd horsewhip me, eh? This has got to stop. That's the only thing you're right about. This whole thing has got to stop. Right here, right now. There she blows. Never mind the kettle. I want you out of here. Don't you care about your gas bill then, dear? I care about my reputation on this estate. I am not into molesting old ladies. The bottom of your kettle will be burnt out, dear. I'll buy you a new electric. I don't want presents from you. I will not be compromised. Oh, this is ridiculous. I need a cup of tea. Don't forget the biscuits. All right. I want you to find someone your own age, dear. Good. I won't stand in your way. Don't worry. Good. I expect you've got your eye on some other ladies on this estate. Some of the sluts, dear. Bingo Betty. I don't know Bingo Betty. It's all the same to me, dear. If you want a menage à trois, I'm not the jealous type. Menage I don't care what type you are. We'll just end this on a good note, OK? As quickly as possible. Yes, dear. We can still be friends, but please don't call round here ever again. All right, dear. I might ask the management for a move on emotional grounds. They'll want a statement from both of us. A statement? I've got nothing to say. Oh, do what you like. All right, dear. I had the same trouble with the caretaker. Well, what do you expect? He said, come down to the cellar. I don't want to hear anything salacious. Nor do I, dear. He says to me, I've got something interesting to show you. Look, can't you tell this to your Pakistani while you're buying a pint of milk? No, dear. I was amazed when he turned his torch on three foot... Three foot of water down there. He said, soon the old lot will be underwater. We'd better go to my boat. Where's that, I said. Rye, he says. Rye, I said. Yes, he says. Rye, you have been chosen, he says. Do you mind if I have another biscuit? Help yourself. So did you go to Rye? Yes, I went on his cabin cruiser. It was raining, dear. He says this won't stop for months, and he waved his fists at the sky. Pathetic. He says after the flood... Aye, I know. I think he's been saying that to a lot of people. I don't go near him now. Nor do I. Especially when it's raining. Well, we've had a lot of that recently. I think it's the Russians. They're probably all in it together. Yes, dear. If you say so, dear. Well, goodbye, Mrs... I won't detain you, dear. I'll be on my way. We've reached our understanding, our arrangement. You just never visit here again. Yes, dear. Right, oh dear. I've trained myself to be like the Queen. I never go to the toilet on public occasions. That can be very useful. You never know when you're going to need that. Yes, dear, that's what I thought. Well, bye-bye. I'd like to sing you a song before I go, dear. If that's all right by you. Oh, all right. My grandfather's clock was too big for the shelf. So it stood ninety years on the floor. 
it was taller by half than the old man himself, though it weighed not a penny weight more. But it stopped dead, never to go again, when the old man died. I saw her to the door. I knew she got the message at last. Why did it have to end like that? With a complete breakdown in human communication. We're either isolated, lonely or completely misunderstanding each other. I mean, why are we all so suspicious of each other? What's happened to the friendly cup of tea, anyway? Why can't you talk to children? Why do mothers pull them indoors as soon as you do? What's happened? How many more bolts are we going to put on the door, eh? Do you remember the word good morning? Did it ever mean anything? In the pain of that moment, the frustration, as if I was saying goodbye to anything in the nature of friendship, on an impulse, I kissed her forehead. Imagine my surprise when she vanished, and standing in her place was Franz. Franz, a Nordic, handsome, I suppose, young man, who had had a spell put on him and had been doomed to wander our estate as an unhappy, ugly old woman, until somebody kissed her, or him, transforming him back to his original self. I promised you a true story, and I have given you one. So that's how I met Franz. We all live in a yellow submarine. Yellow submarine, yellow submarine. We all live in a yellow submarine. Yellow submarine, yellow submarine. And the friends. We had nowhere to stay. It arrived unexpectedly, so to speak. So I agreed he could sleep on my settee for a few days. And you know what can happen when you make that sort of arrangement. As to news of Mrs. whoever she was. Jack! Jack! Oh, hello, George. Uh, I'm emptying a flat. Load of old tat. You thought of me. Right. Is that Mrs. What's-her-name? She's vanished. Opt it. What do you mean? Instructions to close down the flat, get rid of everything. At last. Mrs.? Was she ever married? Don't know, mate. That's one troublemaker less on the estate. Where's she gone? No next of kin. To hospital? Some say. She died? I suppose. Where? Don't know. Would you like a rummage round? Yes, I would. Thanks, George. I might find something. A souvenir. How are you settling in? All right. Got a bit of company, then. Temporary. His face is familiar. Did he ever muck about on boats? He wouldn't surprise me. Who put the spell on friends? Your guess is as good as mine. But then who put the spell on all of us? And when will we wake up? I love to go adventuring along the mountain track. And as I go, I love to sing my knapsack on my back. Valdery, Valdera, 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 Valdery, Valdera, my knapsack on my back. Patricia Hayes played the woman, Robert Glenister, Jack, and John Badley, George, in How I Met Franz by John Antrobus. The director was Martin Jenkins. <laughs>